I'll be reviewing all of these Ninjago sets, the Creative Ninja Brick Box, Lloyd's Mecha Battle Evo, Cole's Earth Dragon Evo, Kai's Mech Rider Evo, Nia's Water Dragon Evo, Jay's Titan Mech and Zane's Ice Dragon Creature. Be sure to use the timestamps to find the one you wanna watch, but you should watch them all. <laughs> the Creative Ninja Brick Box surprised me as I'm only used to seeing these brick shaped boxes from LEGO Classic sets unfortunately. They're great for kids to store their LEGO and the clutch on this lid is particularly strong. It isn't however a free build type of experience like classic sets with a few models and extra pieces. In this box you get all of these models and aside from the usual leftover pieces there aren't extras. There's this claim in the box that there's inspiration for more builds inside, but I could only find two pages worth of inspiration in the last pages of the first instruction book. The set is divided into seven different models, with each of them having its own set of instructions. The first is Kai's Ninja Car, a very straightforward build that matches the age marking well. It has space for a driver that ends up being way too high and unprotected in my opinion, but overall feels like a powerful vehicle considering the specific engine related pieces used in the front and back, leading to some sort of jet engine. There's also clips to keep Kai's katanas and two stud shooters to face off against the Bone Hunter. The next build is a blacksmith workshop of sorts with an anvil type build with a sword and a hammer to the side. The building itself is rather simple, but the sloped roof and the use of the dark green curved bows with the help of a 2x2 rounded tile with a printed dragon give it a very distinct Asian look. There's also a weapons holder that can be stored behind the roof up here. Build number 3 is Nia's motorbike. I gotta question the design here. It's not a great looking bike, but it's clearly a sturdy model that should be able to handle some rough play due to the fact of the wheels being held in place with an element I've never seen before. Build number 4 is a tea drinking space that is very similar to the blacksmith workshop, just slightly raised and a few extra fences around. There's another set of weapons here that can similarly be stored behind the roof here. Next there's the training area with an obstacle course for the ninjas to train. A few steps made more dangerous with some fire, a training dummy that spins when hit and so does this contraption here with a few logs old with chains that the ninjas should avoid. These are all super simple and basic builds but I feel they will offer a lot of fun play for kids. The final builds are for the Ninja Dojo, a building that keeps the style of the previous two, it was just made taller but doesn't really have anything in. There's a few jumper plates to which the weapon racks can be placed, but that's about it. You get 6 minifigures with this set, 2 ninja apprentices with a cool uniform, and I kinda like they have wooden katanas instead of real ones. This year's villains are the bone hunters, and while they all look cool with the pale green hands and face prints, the jaw element isn't really working for me, it's way too big and feels out of place. Kai isn't a new minifigure and has been featured in a few sets from 2022 and that's the same with Nia and Master Wu. Cool figures nonetheless. When everything is placed together I do get the feeling of being in a ninja dojo for sure. There's however a lot of small builds that could prove to be a pain to transport and set up every time you'd want to play with it but I guess that's the purpose of the brick box. I think I kinda wanted a big ninja dojo build instead of all of these smaller ones but that's just me. At $60 for a little over 500 pieces is a bit pricey and I can stop comparing these to classic sets. Maybe because of the brick box, there's far cheaper options out there if the aim is introducing kids to LEGO, although I can see these being more appealing to kids already into Ninjago. Lloyd's Mech Battle Evo is a fun set. You get two mechs, the first being the Bone Warrior one, making good use of this fairly recent brick with an angle for the arms and legs. The color scheme is a bit all over the place, but if these joint pieces were red instead of light grey, the overall look would have been far better, in my opinion. I do like the use of the slopes and ingot elements in this metallic black color. The back is very plain, the feet are weird looking but provide a good base of support and there's this giant weapon that can be split in two, which the mecha can hold in his hands. The access to the pilot is done by raising the hat like structure and the chest area. The bone warrior will stay in place connected with studs on the back of the leg element. The start of the set is obviously Lloyd's mech. It looks very similar to the bone warrior one, the same types of pieces are used for the limbs but there's some printed nexo night shield elements on the arms and the chest area is this big pearl gold element with a round 2x2 printed tile. 
There's this sword for him to fight and I like how the building instructions has a little visual story going on where Lloyd gets his mech and goes training. A bone warrior shows up, they start fighting and eventually Lloyd upgrades his mech with golden shoulder pads, golden pieces for the legs, some thrusters and wings. After being victorious, Master Wu awards a collectible resilience spanner. I really liked how much bulkier the mech looks with just a few pieces and I'm sure kids will enjoy that too. The Golden Lloyd minifigure looks great and the Bone Warrior isn't half bad either. For $20 this set feels like great value, having over 200 pieces and two sturdy mechs that will surely fight each other until pieces fly off. Kids will love this one. Cole's Hearth Dragon Evo follows in the same footsteps of the previous set with a story-driven build in the instructions booklet. We start off with Cold's dragon in a very basic form and then they find a cursed bone sword in a cave that summons a bone warrior and the fight begins. Then the dragon evolves, becomes bigger and develops a tail by detaching the leg section and adding a few extra builds. The bone warrior goes through an evolution himself and evolves into Bone Scorpio, a neat spooky build. And finally the dragon assumes its final form, growing some horns and wings and after a successful challenge the heroes are awarded with the strength banner. I really liked how halfway through the build there's already a dragon ready to play with so in that regard the building experience will be very rewarding for kids. The final form of the dragon looks a bit weird though, especially considering the back legs which are super short. All the limbs can be posed ever so slightly but sometimes I had trouble finding the right angles for display and I was kinda let down for the fact that the head doesn't move and can't be posed. The lower jaw can open and close though. Speaking of head, there's this massive gap here almost as if the head was not a part of this build and it's kinda bad when you look at it from the side. Finally the horns feel like a new element, but the fact that the connection points here are cross axle holes makes it so that when you place these cones here the element doesn't go all the way and you see this little bit of black for the element underneath, which I also don't love. Cole's minifigure while cool is not new, so this set feels a bit underwhelming. Also if you consider that its piece count is just 60 pieces higher than the mech battle set, but $15 more expensive for a grand total of $35. So all in all, not really digging this one as much as the previous two. Kai's Mech Rider Evo set has a lot going on for it. Four minifigures total with Kai, Nia and his Bone Warrior being repeats from the sets mentioned before and then we get to see the Bone King for the first time, clearly distinguishable from the Bone Warriors with his cape with cutouts and Kabuto helmet. Kai has a mech, similar in style with the ones from the mech battle set, but the footprint is smaller and more anatomically correct when compared to the other two mechs. Features a new finger element on the ends and I like the piece usage for the shoulder pads which feature some stickers. The chest will open so that Kai can go in and on the back he can place his katanas. The highlight of the set is the ninja bike, actually scaled for the mech and not Kai himself. Kai's mech can be connected to the bike with the clips and bars both vehicles have and the whole thing actually looks cool when put together. The main body of the bike has a sleek design to it which I like, there's minor sticker usage for detailing and I like the swords and technique racks here for added detail. But the way the wheels are connected is done via these technique beams with lots of holes exposed. Even when the bike undergoes evolution like the previous sets and a few items are added to it, it still feels a bit meh. But this is a fun one to play with. The enemies are clearly overpowered, especially when you give Kai's mech this gigantic weapon. The bike rides really smoothly with the use of the big tire elements, which is probably the cause for the pricing. For a mere 30 extra pieces when compares to Cold's Dragon set, the price is increased by $10, so 312 pieces for $45. This does not feel like a $45 set to me at all, and while the play value feels really good, the overall value of the set is definitely underwhelming. We're almost getting to the good stuff, but before that let's take a look at the last small set of this video, Nia's Water Dragon Evo. On the ninja side of things we have the third Nia of the video and Lloyd in a regular looking outfit. The enemy this time around is the bone guard with a crazy amount of weaponry going on, he's like the ninjago doctor octopus. Nia's dragon actually looks great, the color scheme with white, dark blue and baby blue seems fitting. 
The proportions feel a lot better than the ones from Cole's Earth Dragon, it's highly poseable with a lot of freedom on the leg and tall joints, the neck area is more bearable in terms of gapping, the head can be tilted and the shapes going down from here look really nice. It will also undergo evolution with the inclusion of a few golden elements on the tail, shoulders and some sort of wings. Nothing too crazy, but you can still see the difference. I don't think it provides as much play value as the Mac Battle set does, but with the same price of $20 for a little bit less pieces but 3 minifigures instead, it's a close second. Now here comes the good stuff, Jay's Titan Mac set. What an awesome looking Mac this one is. Building it was getting me really excited as every shape looked brilliant and spot on. There was a point in the build where this is what I had and I loved every inch of the thing, but then came the oversized hands, the shoulder bazookas and a weird looking head and I was a bit let down because it felt to me these details weren't as brilliantly designed as the rest of it. It's still amazing though, very poseable and it has a lot of movable joints. Starting at the feet they only pose side to side because these elements restrict movement front and back, but it's a necessity to keep the mech upright. The knees almost feel like I'm handling a Gumpla model kit and if you ever handled one of those you know what I'm talking about. At the waist the legs can go front and back and have a little bit of lateral hinging limited once again by the pieces used. The arms are amazing, at the shoulder they move as you would expect them to with these elements here, but the elbow design is what awes me the most. I don't think I've ever seen a Lego mech this size with such an impressive range and finally the hands are ok I guess. The bazookas are held in place with ball joints so they can be aimed where you want them to and they both have these big shooters. The head is an ok design I feel, but this thing here in the back drives me nuts. I can't get it to look as round as it does on packaging, so I feel like removing it altogether. Overall, for a mech not based on IPs and being completely made up by the LEGO design team, it feels to me like one of the best ones ever. Though that Monkey King Ultra Mech is looking pretty hot as well, not gonna lie. Now, aside from the bazookas, the mech also has a large dragon blade with a spinning cross guard and some Asian style decoration at the bottom. It can be held by a simple Technic pin on the mech's hands, but since it's so huge, the arm doesn't have enough clutch to hold it up, unfortunately. But if the sword wasn't enough, there's also these two additional katanas just in case that can be attached on the side of the left leg and they also have the Asian deco here. By the chest area the cockpit space for Jay. There's also a fourth Nia minifigure and the Pixel bot that carries Jay's katanas around. On the bone army side of things there's the third bone king equipped with a shield, though I don't think it'll do him any good against the mech. There's also a bone hunter similar to the other enemies I've featured before and a bone knight with his massive apparatus over his head. Looks kind of amazing but it can't be easy to move around with that. They also have this wheeled crossbow of sorts and when working properly lets you shoot 3 projectiles with a clever mechanism, though again, I don't think this will do them any good fighting against Jay's mech. It is at the end of the day what this set is all about and in doing so a brilliant set in my adult eyes opinion. Feels like it won't hold itself up great after some rough play but if nothing else is a model that will look great on display. Almost 800 pieces for $80 feels more than reasonable and a far better deal than Cole's Earth Dragon or Kai's Mech Rider in my opinion. You could either get this or these two for the same amount of money and I don't know about you guys but if given the choice I would pick the Titan Mech any day of the week. The biggest set of this wave is Zane's Ice Dragon creature and it looks seriously cool because it's an Ice Dragon, get it? Now, before getting into the dragon itself, we covered the minifigures, repeats of Bone King, a Bone Knight and a slightly different Bone Warrior. They have this spider droid of sorts with a shooter and there's this small build here, probably the entrance to the Bone Kingdom or something. On the ninja side of things, we have Zane with some frosted detailing on the outfit and his power source peeking from inside, but my favorite of the lot is Pixel. Her outfit is amazing, it has a very sci-fi-ish look to it and I kinda want to make a matching vehicle of sorts. But the dragon is the whole point of this set, it completely dwarfs the other two of the lineup and has some nice detailing going on. The head and neck are completely poseable, jaw opens, arms have the same issue as Cole's earth dragon due to the cross axle underneath being able to be seen, the upper head element is dual molded with baby blue and trans clear parts which look amazing. 
Moving towards the back you'll notice the six legs which feels like an interesting choice of design. Though it makes it slightly harder to pose because they're all on click hinges, so I found myself having to adjust the front and back legs a lot to find a suitable position for the middle legs that sometimes got hung up in the air. Also depending where you grab them you might very easily take some elements out which wasn't that fun. Those elements and a few others give it a lot of texture, almost as if the design was meant to mean some dragon scales of sorts. I don't see it though, that for me becomes way more visible in these scales going from the neck to the tail, clearly identified by the use of this very bright shade of blue. The tail also has some joints, so there's extra movement there, but what impressed me the most were the wings. I'm usually not a big fan of these massive molded elements, as opposed to brick building things with standard looking bricks. But I gotta say the combination of golden elements and the trans clear blade elements look extremely good. They don't pose as much, but just enough I think, though this joint here due to the weight of the wings tends to go down. At the top there's these massive banners and seats for two ninjas. By the shoulder area there's a new mudguard elements of sorts that looks cool and I was really excited to find this new and very useful inverted slope. As a last detail it might be hard to notice but the bottom of the dragon is colored in sand blue so I really like that attention to detail. Another amazing thing about this set is that you have the option of using the dragon pieces to build a dragon warrior instead, making this set an actual 2-in-1 model. The building instructions include steps for both models. Due to time constraints I wasn't able to take down the dragon to build the dragon warrior and honestly I like the dragon better, but having the option of making an alternate model is a welcome one that increases the overall value of the model. This set feels more of a display set rather than a play set, some pieces fall off, it's hard to pose the legs but I'm sure kids will find it fun regardless. It has great minifigures though the bone army is completely overpowered once again, and almost a thousand pieces for $99 is still a better thing than Cole's Dragon and Kay's Mac Rider sets. I like this one a lot but if I have to pick a favorite out of all of these, Jay's Titan Mac would be that one for me. If I had to choose one to give kids to play, it would be Lloyd's Mech Battle or the Creative Ninja Box. A few fun facts about these sets. If you were to pick them all, this would be your Bone Army. 12 minifigures total and the battle for power between the three Bone Kings would be insane. This would be your Ninja Force. 16 minifigures total with a whooping total of 4 Nias and 2 Kais. Every set came with a pack of these Bone Warrior elements, so after you're done with all of the builds, this is all of the leftover parts, which is crazy to think about. And being Ninjago sets, you know you'll also get a lot of spare katanas on top of everything else. Buying all sets would cost $360 and the combined piece count of them all is 3290 pieces, not counting extras. All of these sets will be available January 1st. Hope you enjoyed this type of video featuring a full wave. Let me know if I should do more of these, subscribe because it was a lot of work and I'll see you all in the next one.